Hey, what's up everyone? Mori Carlson here, and we have a brand new video for today. It's going to be on Irina Privolova, the 60 meter world record holder currently. And the reason that I'm doing the breakdown is one, because it's National Women's Day. So for all the women out there, just want to wish you National Women's Day. Thought it would be a great day to be able to do that. But then also, recently there was a 60 meter uh, ran by, what was it, Alja Del Ponte, who ran a 708. And so that made me really want to look into who is the current world record holder and where is she at, uh, which made it so that I was able to find Irina Privolova. So uh, we'll go ahead and hop right into the video. But before that, if you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, recommendations, anything like that, go ahead and leave those down below. We'll hop in the video right now. All right. So Irina Privolova, she actually ran a 692. You can see that in 1992. This isn't the one that she actually ran. This is a 696, I believe, when in this one. But uh, we'll go ahead and, and take a look. This is her right here in lane three. And, you know, one of the things that stands out, and, and I know we don't get a great angle here, but, um, you know, love to see the, the start here, right? Being able to have excellent start mechanics and acceleration mechanics i know this is a little bit older so we don't get as much of the hd quality but you can already see you know it, it's great from the perspective of um you know being able to to see the height right she definitely exploded more outwards didn't get as much upwards here and i love the 60 meter uh, i've been really focusing on being able to understand acceleration more i feel like most people have an issue with getting that really elite level acceleration and so the 60 meter is such a great place to be able to really see how good people are able to get through that start phase into that acceleration and, or drive phase and then into their top speed because basically, you know, as they're getting into their drive phase or as they're working through their drive phase and their top end speed, then the, the race is over. But within three steps here, we all already see Irina really driving those knees up, really doing a great job of being able to, to land on the balls of her feet. I know she's still you know, in that drive phase just based off of the height and, and the position that she's in. But even though she's in that position, she's still doing a great job of being able to drive out, still doing a great job of being able to get the knees to the same height as the hips, which really gives her a great advantage here as she's continuing through that drive phase, right? And, and what ends up happening, it looks like, is that she really transitions through that drive phase really quickly, right? So you can see how she's in a really great position here. Sorry, I, I rewound too much there. She's in a great position here. I love the position of the body. Uh, and then what ends up happening is she goes in and she stands up really quick out of that, right? So she transitions from that drive phase to that top end speed. And I see this a lot, almost immediately, right? Within like two steps. You want to slowly make that action, right? So you can see woman in lane four here goes and slowly gets closer to a drive phase and ends up almost catching her because of how fast Irina just kind of popped up right there, right? So now all of a sudden she popped up. Now she has to get back going with her top speed. So she had that great start. She had that great acceleration, but wasn't able to be able to hold that because of how fast she got into her top end posture. Was able to kind of will it out here at the end. But, you know, really let's go back to that beginning one thing that's super important here is as you're going through this drive phase right here, it's important to be able to stay in that position, stay in that position to be able to really get yourself in a slow transition to your top end speed, right? You don't want to go from here to all of a sudden standing straight up right now. She's standing up and she really wasn't able to allow her foot to get out in front enough, right? So what ends up happening is that you know, as you get to your top speed, you want to start to slowly get that foot to be able to extend and pull. And that should actually be what ends up making it so you get into your top end speed is the position of the foot and how you're cycling that foot in, in forward and then back through underneath. It shouldn't be because you realign your spine, right? The spine should naturally happen that way. But if you force your spine up and then you have to regain your traction by working back on the cycle, the leg cycle, and, and where the foot position is, it's going to slow you down for a few steps, right? It's not going to be a smooth transition from that, that start phase and into that drive phase and then into the top end speed phase. So it's going to, it's going to be a little bit different for everybody in terms of how you're going to transition into, you know, the, the top speed, right? Some people are going to be a little bit more just kind of hunched over and keep that position all the way through. Uh, some people are going to get into their more upright position a little bit earlier on, like Christian Coleman and somebody like that. But, you know, it, that I think a lot of that has to do with the range through the hips, uh, the positions that you have within your, you know, spine, the, the pelvis, the, again, the range of motion through the hips. Make it so you have to 
kind of coordinate what you're going to be doing through that drive phase to the top end speed and really understand, you know, how you can maximize that. Because I think a lot of people overlook the importance of that drive phase and how you can get a lot more out of your top end speed by being able to better transfer through that phase. So um, hopefully this makes sense, being able to talk a little bit more about it and being able to expand it a little bit more on the foot position, how that foot position ends up impacting your spine angle and spine position. So uh, as always, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. And if it's helpful, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any um, interest in checking out some of the things that we do within the breakdowns or within the programs or, or any ways that we can help you, check those in the description down below. I also just added recently added some links to um, some different, you know, dumbbells, some, some resistance band, um, just some different things like sleds, things that will help you with your speed development. If you're looking for something like that, these are the, the best products that I use within my own gym, within my own facility. And so I think that would be beneficial for you. So if you're looking for something like that, you could always check that down in the description down below, as well as some of the programs here. So uh, yeah, guys, as always, thanks for watching.